Let's head down to the locker room area. Kalani now talking to the press. The Liberty, uh, I thought they played a, a, a great game on, on their part, and, and obviously looking at our game, it's a team loss. Um, we didn't do anything in the three phases to really uh, gain the favor of the game. So uh, special teams, defense and offense definitely lost this game. But uh, I think Liberty is a lot better than people think. And I, I didn't take them lightly. Uh, I know a lot of people in college football pro- probably does, but I know Coach Freeze is a great coach. And those guys play some, some inspired football. And so I think that, uh, I mean, their only loss is to Wake Forest and they lost by one because they went for went for two. And so this team's a really good team, and um, they played really well. They played a great game tonight, and uh, you know we, we couldn't we couldn't uh, make it a game, especially when I mean to go to be up fourteen to three and then to have thirty eight un- unanswered points um, was shocking for us. But um, you know just got to fight through this. This is a uh, definitely some adversity that we're going through, and. Uh, you know, you have two choices. You can you can fight through it, or, or you can or you can. It's a fight or flight moment, and I only know one way, and that's to work hard and fight through this, and and uh, make sure that we have the right guys with us along the way. So, uh, looking forward to, to next week and uh, the game at home. Um, congratulations to Liberty, uh, but but we definitely have some things that uh, that we need to fix uh, as a team. That's my job. I look forward to battling through this and, and uh, playing our game next next Friday. So, short week. Obviously, got to travel back home from uh, being out here in the East Time Zone. But um, love our boys, love our team, love our program. Uh, you know, it's going to be it's a really true test now to, to for all for all of us, our, our coaches, staff, and players. Uh, right now, where we're sitting at right now, and and, and uh, you know, we've, we've played really good ball in the past. For this season, and got to find a way to get back to it. And I'm uh, looking forward to working hard and getting there. So, many questions. You said there are a lot of things to fix. Uh, yeah. What is what is mainly the, the top two or three? Uh, fundamentals. You know, I still don't think we improve there, and um, defensively, and even offensively. When I talk about fundamentals, just the blocking, tackling, things like that, uh, taking care of the football. Um, we got to do a better job as a team there, and then if I were breaking down uh, to the each phase, then they probably go a little bit more detailed and have to watch more film. But that's the first feeling I have coming off the field. Defensive changes that you made, um, obviously Tuiaki was there with you. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the others, and do you feel like they had any effect at all? Uh, you know, we simplify the game plan, try to focus on execution. Not sure if we executed well enough. And, um, you know, just w- I had to watch the film a little bit more and see where the breakdowns were. But um, obviously, you need to make more plays defensively and, and um, need more disruption uh, overall. And, um, yeah, but tackle better, um, shore up the run. They, once again, give a lot of run yards and a lot of big, big plays. But, um, you know, they need to execute better. I thought simplifying the game plan would be a lot easier for us to, to execute. And um, the thing is, now the film doesn't lie. We can go back and check it out and see what the reason why that we didn't execute. Where, where, where is the fault? Did you call close now? Did I did, yes. For me to not call the plays? Oh, I'm going to keep running the defense and, and focusing on getting the defense better and executing better. So that's that's going to be my focus, and that's you know I'm going to ask the guys to coach their positions better and hold everybody accountable, and ask the players to hold each other accountable. And uh, I look forward to seeing who wants to come out of this mess, you know. But it's it, it's an easy filter for me. See who wants to join the fight and who wants to not be a part of it. And so it, we'll, we'll get through it. Teams are- you on the edges. It seems like you can't seal the edges. What is the problem there? Yeah, it's, it's probably a lot of the technique and probably um, I, have to, I have to watch the film. So I know that they bounced a lot of the runs. Uh, it, I'd be concerned if we didn't have any bodies out there to make the tackles, but I feel like we had bodies out there to make the play. you feel like you guys brought the energy to match what they did with 
their coach calling this such an important game for their program? Yeah, I, thought, I mean, it looked really good at the beginning. You know, we're up 14-3, to three, got a turnover, and uh, felt good about it. And, and uh, I think, you know, you have to give Liberty a lot of credit. Their fans are ready. I mean, there, there's a lot of excitement and energy coming from their their fans, and we know their student section was behind us. And so, uh, you know, they, they, they had a lot of fun. They stormed the field. Um, and I know this was a big deal for them, but it was for us too. I, I just um, It just didn't work out in our favor, and, and, and maybe they – you know, when you're looking at it, they 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 wanted it more than we did, and that that was for sure. And and um, well, I I need to find out why. And so, uh, every game from here on out is is a Super Bowl for us, and that's uh, that that is the mindset that I expect our players to go through and our staff to go through in every game. It doesn't matter who the opponent is, and um, but now it's time for us to really show and, and form my, our identity out of this adversity. Yeah, I, I think the players had had a um, good message to each other, and I think there's a. I, I I like what I saw in the in the locker room. Players speaking up and leading and and um, calling each other out and holding each other accountable. That's going to be really good. We need that uh, moving forward from here on out. We need our players to step up and and um, take ownership of, of everything, you know, and and for for coaches to do it too. But I I think it's promising knowing that the players are frustrated and they. I expect them to give us the feedback and voice uh, their opinion as much as possible. Last couple of questions. We saw, I think Cody Epps came off. We saw Chris Brooks. I don't think played much in the second half. Did, did, how did you come out of this thing health wise? Uh, Cody obviously didn't return, so we'll have to look at that. Um, uh, he went into the tent. They, they looked at him. Um, you know, obviously we didn't have Peyton Wilgar going into this game, so uh, Chaz was able to play. Um, but I, I don't know other. Other than Cody, I don't know how, um, if anybody else was unable to participate in this game. We had some some guys that are banged up, and towards the end they had to make some decisions. We put in our, our – um, the last drive was our backup. So I think the last couple of drives we wanted to put our backups in there and keep some of our guys fresh, keep them ready, that they were kind of banged up, ready for the next week. You mentioned the past couple of weeks that you've kind of known the answers. You feel like you've known the answers. Do you know – yeah, I've I've been through I've been through stuff before, so I want to lean on the difficulties, and and I know that uh, people have concerns and everything, but I I know I, one thing I can do is fight. I'm all about fighting through stuff, so uh, back me in the corner and find out, and that's where we're at right now. And so uh, things are going to get really tough in our program, and that's how it's going to have to be. And I look forward to to seeing the team that will emerge from all of this. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, let's head down to the locker room area. Kalani Sitake, BYU head coach, joining us now on the headset. Uh, one quick segment with Kalani before the uh, team gets off and on the buses. BYU falls to Liberty today, 41-14. Uh, to 14. Uh, First up, Kalani, uh, Hugh Freeze, very complimentary of you, your program, and, and the BYU name and BYU brand. Uh, I know you want to pay uh, credit to Coach Freeze and his program. It's a good football team that uh, goes to 7-1 and one today. Yeah, definitely. And um, obviously... Uh, not our best showing and uh, disappointed at, at our performance and that's you know my job as head coach but um, you can't take anything away from Liberty I think they played uh, you know an outstanding game from from top to bottom and uh, they just wanted it more and and, and um, the team that does that usually comes out the victors and in this case um, you know they rolled off 38 points in a row and, and uh, the thing is done so um uh, you know, we, we're in a tough spot right now, but um, you know, I, I am I'm excited to see who comes out of this, who's going to emerge out of this from our program, coaches, staff, and players. And, and I, I believe in a lot of our guys, and, and um, you know, we're, we're obviously got to refocus and, and get things um, way different than what we what we've been doing. Uh, if we're going we're gonna to change this momentum, this yeah. downward momentum. You said Liberty wanted it more. What do you what do you need your guys to want? To have to show it to, to to be able to have this season finish the way you want it to, Kalani. Well, I think there's a, there's there's responsibility from everybody to do this, but I, I my my I'm the head job, a head coach. That's my job. So obviously, um, uh, you know, I, I've got, I've got to figure some things out and and, and uh, see kind of a, uh, you know see what we can actually get done in a short week um, from a lot of different angles and and. Uh, the thing that I was really disappointed in today was just the, the loss of fundamentals, and that's something that I thought we focused on quite a bit last week, 
and the fact that you know fundamentals meaning not able to block, not able to 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 um, you know to tackle, or inability to do that cons- do that consistently and do it well. Um, you know th- those when you're in the situation where you're trying to run the right scheme to stop what they can do o- offensively, you, you rely on guys doing their one eleven, and that means making the block and making the tackle and. Um, and then not being able to take care of the football. And for us on defense, um, not being able to disrupt and, 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 and get after the quarterback. I mean, too comfortable. You know, the fact that he had this type of efficiency, that's on that's on us, and that's on us not being able to disrupt, disrupt his timing. <clears throat> Coaches, we've followed your career. You've had success pretty much everywhere you've gone, so I, I don't know if you have much insight to that, but you have been a guy on the game your whole life, so I'm sure you do. But where I'm going with this is I'm – I'm unfortunately not proud to say that you know I've been on teams where losing has become acceptable. So what does what does it look like when um, you know losing patterns or losing habits start to become acceptable on a team? And how do you identify those and combat those? Yeah, it's easy to identify those who believe in those who want to be here, and that, and that goes from the entire program. And who's willing to fight? That's that's the thing. Is I know you said you've been on some of those teams, but you know who the fighters are. You know and and. Uh, we need to have 11 guys on on the field fighting for the team, and if all we have is that 11, then that's 11 that has to play all three ways, you know. But uh, we have more than that, and and um, but that, that that goes for everybody. Right now, you're, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb, especially when uh, I'm looking for fighters in this position. I'm looking for guys who are going to willing to work and grind and get this thing done and focus on on all the little details. We've been doing that, but um, right now at this point, you're going to see if if people can. Uh, avoid the outside noise, the negativity, and they can grow and love and, and, and keep getting better as a team, or if, if a person is going to split up and do do their own individual thing. And that's that's for coaches, staff, and players. That that for me, that's the filter right there, and um, and that's what I'm going to go with. Like, who who who's want, who wants to join me in the fight? And uh, we have a lot of players like Puka and others that want to fight. Let's go see. Who else wants to be along with us? Hey, Kalani, from 2-0 and and beating Baylor to 4-4 four and four and where you are right now, what's changed most within your team from then to now, do you think? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, looking at, at what we can play for, that, that's the thing is these guys have a lot more to, to accomplish and, and um, just disappointing. But you got to get over it already. And the way you get over it is fight and get to the next one and, and do everything you can to exhaust every ounce of energy you have going into the next week of prep and going into the game. That's uh, that's what we can do. And uh, I felt like we had that, and the momentum was probably there, and the energy probably came a little bit more from um, outward forces. Now we're all about intrinsic. Now this has got to come from within and within the circle of, of, of our of our team. And uh, let's see what happens, man. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not excited that we're in this position because I know we can play better. We're definitely better than 4-4. Four and four. But this it is the reality, and so we face the reality. And we have four guaranteed games left, uh, one coming up on a Friday, and we've got to ha- have this. It's, it's a sense of urgency. There's no more room to, to, to. There's no room for error now. Now, now the, the urgency just takes off, and and so, we're, we're on edge now. You know, everybody's on edge, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to getting this, this done next week. Kalani, you told the media that you called defensive plays today. What kind of tone did you want to set by making this change, and what tactically did you want to see done with you on the headset? Well, I wanted to simplify the defense and so we can execute better. And, and, and when you do that, it's not totally about scheme. It, it's now, we, now it comes down to who's doing their job, who's uh, taking care of the fundamentals, who's using the right proper technique and alignment and assignment. Um, and I'll, I'll be able to see it from the film. And, and um, it, like I just mentioned, there's not a lot of room for error, so th- I just don't know if um, we keep playing with a lot of the guys that are making mistakes there. We just got to keep moving on. And that's what my goal is to simplify it so we can get that done. Uh, obviously, Liberty gave us a bunch of different looks and, and had uh, some, some unique things that with the, with the personnel packages that they have that, that we knew that going into the, into the game that would be difficult. But in terms of simplifying, I didn't feel like we were in a bad position. We just... Uh, they extended drives and made plays um, against man coverage, against our base stuff, cover three and, and, and cover two. And um, they were able to make the plays. We weren't able to get to the quarterback. And, and so I have to figure out why we weren't able to get there with a four-man rush and even with some pressure why we weren't able to get there and, and disrupt his timing. Outside of the pass rush, which you just identified, and I know this uh, loss is fresh, but are there any other either personnel or coaching assignment uh, adjustments that are on your mind right now? 
Um, no, I have to keep looking at it. And, and, and listen, the, the season is still going. So you, when you're making adjustments, they're, they're usually within. We, we need all hands on deck. And uh, so I need all the help I can get, you know. And, and, and I'm not open to. Uh, I'm not. I'm not uh, going to hide from criticism or, or, or um, uh, you know, when people want to talk about what we're doing differently. But I'm going to simplify our stuff so we can, so the errors can be seen, and then we hold the right, the right people accountable for for why it's it's happening. That's that's what it's going to come down to. And and um, you know, I, I have a good feeling about where we can make some corrections and um, be in a better position. But it, this is the we're talking about the defense here and offensively. And block better, you know, and and uh, establish a run game, and let's let's do some things where we can make the plays, and let's get let's get in a situation where Jaron can throw the ball and, and and be accurate. And so, I have there's a lot of things to, to fix, and um, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the guys are humbled right now, and now we got to build off of the humility and 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 get them ready so they can play assignment sound football and give us a chance. Yeah, the nature of the game dictated a lot of this, Kalani, but. You know, 48 rush attempts to 16. That's a 3-to-1 rush attempt ratio, Liberty to BYU today. Yeah, and, and uh, we did nothing to, to, to really stop them from doing that. So uh, they, they were able to run the ball on us. They popped a couple big ones on us, the one really long one that went 80. Yeah. Um, but um, we knew they have, they have good players, man. And, and um, you know, you can't, you can't make um, plays on, and you can't stop people unless you – get better at tackling and um, in those situations I felt like there's definitely a high number of missed tackles and um, you know th- that's the name of the game you have to tackle better um, obviously we have to put our players in the best scheme so they can tackle better but uh, you know overall there's a lot of room for improvement I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it done. It was interesting that Hugh Freeze said in his post game comments I hope that BYU wasn't offended by our excitement there was a there was a field storm tonight you know everything they were putting into this game and i know you don't feel that way that's their right to celebrate the way they did yeah and 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 i i know he i know what he was saying because he he's a he's a good man and, and just you know focusing on the sportsmanship of the game they, i know that they uh it was an honor for playing this game I, I know they had the vision of this happening in their athletic department from years ago um you know we they definitely wanted it more and 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 um I don't think uh, everybody on our team took them lightly or or our staff, but there is a different sense in the game where where you can tell that they really, really wanted it. And even when the game was out of control, they were still hung around and ready to storm the field. Um, You know, I wanted to shake hands with them and everything, but uh, for the the player's safety and things like that, just getting out of the way, uh, we we wanted to shake hands, but it was we explained that it was better for us to kind of get out of the way, let them have their moment. And congratulations to Liberty and their fans. Um, you know, it didn't work out in our favor, but it, it, we do love the game of football, and it was nice to have two teams that, that are, are Christian-based teams be able to compete, and obviously congratulations for, to them for winning, but uh, we, we definitely know we can play better. Uh, we won't get this one back. We get next week, and so that's the, that's the thing to be optimistic about and be positive. There's still a lot more to play for uh, this season, and we have to define it to our players and see if that's good enough for them, and if not, then then uh, those guys should not be on the field. So mm-hmm. let's let's get the guys that care and love it and love what they do and represent BYU and let's go out there and do it. And, and um, to all the fans that showed up in the game, thank you so much for always supporting us. We love you guys. Uh, apologize that we didn't play the best that we can, but uh, look, looking forward to get, getting it done next week. Yeah, finding finding the want uh, <laughs> finding the want that they need to beat ECU on a, on a short week on Friday night. Yeah, it, it, I mean it comes down to it. The sense of urgency you can't hide anymore. So that that's. Uh, We'll find out real quickly what we're made out of and, and, and who's who we can definitely count on uh, to join the fight and who's who's going to cower away from it. Kalani, thank you for the time. Safe travels. Thanks, guys. Go Cougs. All right, that's Kalani Sitake. We'll come back with Cougar Nation now. You can reach us on Cougar Nation now, hashtag BYUCNN, hashtag BYUCNN for Cougar Nation now, or just to tweet me at Greg Rubel. Included in our Cougar Nation now program will be a trivia question for two half gallons of famous creamery ice cream. And it sounds like it's uh, anything but ice cream weather back in Utah tonight. Uh, The weather has changed, cool, maybe rainy, maybe icy, and maybe even snowy by tomorrow night. But uh, it was a gorgeous day here for all but the outcome in Lynchburg, 41-14. to Liberty over BYU, our final score. Greg and Riley and Mitch will soon join us up in the booth as we continue with you on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.